And in Kano State, the federal government confirmed committing the sum of 5.9 billion naira to the NPAR program for the Bot Sea beneficiaries. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development says not less than 177 youths benefited from the government's training on smartphone repairs and services under the N Skills Program, which is a component of the NPAR program in Kano State. Well, it says about 16,000 youths were currently benefiting from the program in the state, noting that about 18,000 uh, had already benefited in Butch A and Butch B of the program. And for a breakdown of this figures reportedly spent on, uh, you know, the federal government's NPAR program, let's bring in our right news analysts. Dr. Sam Amadi. Dr. Amadi, thank you so much for being here. And I'm looking at 5.9 billion naira. And uh, this batch C is supposed to have about 177 um, beneficiaries. And if you break that down, that comes to almost about 33 million naira per beneficiary. And one wonders why is this, you know, that's a lot of money to set up anybody. But why is this generating so much controversy? Well, again, I mean, first is if you look at the per capita, the unit cost of this training. And of course, if you're going to do mass training, you're going to have benefit from economies of scale. So uh, it should actually be less. But again, the question is, uh, we've seen that uh, there's lack of trust around the, um, the social intervention program. That there's been issues, allegations of corruption and all that. Because the, the, the way that these funds are used do not make for quality control. So it was during the pandemic, if, uh, you know, palliatives, everybody was, it was almost like every Nigeria got a palliative and billions were spent. So the, the debate around, is it cost efficient? That's to say, are we, and we know from experience that the way the bureaucracy works is that the, the cost, the, this component will have, the component for managing the bureaucracy might actually be more than, you know, the component that goes into, um, uh, the, the project itself, I mean, in the, the, the World Bank has done a lot of studies, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa, showing that in terms of programs, that uh, government public sector programs, oftentimes less than 50% intervention, the, the quotient that actually gets into the program itself is less than 50%. The rest, bureaucracy and, of course, uh, the old corruption. But beyond cost efficiency, let's look at effectiveness. So the question now is, all these programs, in, in theory they are nice, skilling is one of the ways to deal with uh, corruption, of course, create self-employment and get people also to employ others. But the problem is you have to think in terms of the standard factor, which is policy alignment. Are you going to bring reinforcement? Think, for example, these uh, young uh, trainees, uh, mm -hmm. one of the issues raised in that report is that they are warned not to resell their kids. And, you know, so the question is, look, in the first place, we're not even sure whether there's, they're going to commit to this program. We're not sure those who are trained are going to continue because they, they will need f access to finance. They will need supporting environment in terms of policy. They will need a robust, small and medium enterprises policy environment and framework to support. So the lack of reinforcement after this training oftentimes means that the level of success. Uh, we didn't know even from developed economies. For, for example, the U.S. Um, uh, small business uh, admission, uh, office report about startups and these businesses oh, less than 30 percent success rate. So, if you map it to our own cu culture, where there's little support system, policy, you know, uh, intermediations and all that, you know that it's not just about spending to skill them. It's about how do you guarantee sustainability? That's mm. important. And the internal factor. And I'm happy they said they received uh, uh, training on entrepreneurship. Some of the values, uh, value problems that probably will account for people selling their kids and people probably not having the rigor to go through the, the, the full learning and start small to, 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 you know, to improve their business are the things we need to deal with, with a systematic value training. So entrepreneurship value training will help. But ultimately, you want to see that government is reinforcing this training with a policy environment. And that's why oftentimes in developed economies, Finland, North Korea, you see more of industry mediated training. So mm. what that means is that government allows the industries to train for them because first, they will know the skills that count for employment, the skills that will help people set up businesses, and they'll be much more professional 
in managing and getting people skilled to enter into an employment or study abroad. So uh, maybe this is one of the areas that a private-public partnership in the most in a robust sense will help out more. So you you they de help you define. For example, this is about repairing cell phones. So on paper it looks very great. We're going to use so so many components of both. Maybe the guys in um, in the computer village, maybe the guys in uh, Barnax Plaza could be more trusted by phone users than these new guys are trained. So you have to have clear market you know, sensitivity. So that way that particular exactly. skill is be actually useful. being used and be impactful uh, exactly, to the life of the person exactly. who's got yeah. it. You know, Dr. Sam, the federal, well, before we go to the federal government, President Mohammed Buhari has said that he intends to get 100 million people out of poverty, you know, within a 10-year period. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the entire NPAR and all them other plans on that. It's social uh, uh, net program. And the government says it spends 360 billion naira yearly for empowerment of graduates and non-graduates. But you see all of these figures being thrown around, mm -hmm. and one wonders, how do you vet the impact? Absolutely. The, the uh, outcome as well. Now look at this way, there's no request If you look at the oh, MB, money. If you look at the NBC report, if you look at the World Bank report, you'll be able to see that we're not getting people out of poverty. We're actually getting people back, to, uh, no more people into poverty. So for example, we expect that, reports say that about 10 million Nigerians could get into poverty in 2022-2023 if with the trend in terms of the pandemic, in terms of the global uh, economic crisis and the, the, the weakness of our mitigation you know, you know, uh, intervention. So the notion that we're getting 10 million out of poverty every year is just, is, is just political talk. Nobody serious. Even the government's own mm. report for the NBS is not showing any improvement in poverty reduction. Again, Government, the billions we are spending on in these interventions, sh we should see it in two ways. One is that, look, some good ideas are here, some outcomes, but really, this is more about public spend that mostly get into people's pocket, mostly unaccounted for. There's actually a real crisis around auditing of these programs, how they are used, uh, the impact they have. So the cost efficiency and effectiveness, two different things. One is that, look, with these are bogus figures, of course, part of a corrupt bureaucracy that we practice in this country, not just in this government, we've seen it. And of course, uh, they, they uh, you know, moved from the office of the vice president to the president, and now domicile with the, uh, the social development and humanitarian mm. ministry. I mean, the politics of that transfer in the era of uh, the former chief of staff tells a story around also the conception and the commitment of its effectiveness. Uh, Mrs. Ways was here sometimes mm -hmm. in the past mm -hmm. to explain based on allegations of corruption and order. So clearly, I, I would take every of this figure with a pinch of salt. For me, this is both could be part of a, a campaign strategy mm. in terms of financing. It's part of government slush funds. But really, there could be some good, good programs going on here. But this is exaggerated, both in terms of its expected impact, taking 10 million people out of poverty. The fact of the matter, verified by both government institutions and the World Bank, is that more Nigerians are getting to poverty, not less. Wow. And these interventions don't have the capacity. You see, if you look at countries like China, those have done a lot of work in lifting millions into poverty. The, the interventions are not side, they're not side, you know, side, side menu. They are mainstream policy. The policy, the social inclusion policy, the social empowerment policy in terms of labor laws, in terms of budget, where the right. budget is focused, right. they are targeted at providing. So support. the books should yeah. be more open, so that way we know where everyone For the is cost going to. Yeah. And also, we need to see the impact on ground. Dr. Samamadi, yeah. thank you so much for joining us tonight.